Great, everyone. That was a good presentation from every one of you. And we'll continue away from Model 12 for today. Uh, so Model 12, we are looking at a wicked problems in the maritime industry. And so these wicked problems are the issues that if anything happen, it have severe consequence for the industry. Uh, so we are talking about issues such as uh, maritime security, climate change, information technology, and uh, sustainability in the shipping industry. Uh, so these are the wicked problems that we'll be discussing in this Model 12. Uh, having said this, uh, we have some key questions uh, that you need to answer. So these are key, key, uh, three key questions on the slides over here. So the first, I wanted to uh, answer with issue to the impact of security measures on shipping as a whole. And secondly, for you to tell me the impact of shipping activities on the marine environment. And thirdly, the role that information technology play in shipping and a global supply chain as, as a whole. Uh, so let's begin our discussion with, with technology. Uh, so technology has revolutionized the shipping industry. Um, it, we have seen the bigger ships in these days due to technology, especially in the container setup. Uh, I'm saying container setup because before uh, technology, we have seen uh, some of the big ships in a box setup. So that's liquid box and dry box setup. And that is right after the Second World War with in Industrial Revolution, uh, when the third world countries are uh, producing a lot of uh, goods and manufacturers a lot of demand for production. At the same time, there was a, the high demand for raw materials. And the, these raw materials are very far from where the production is. So therefore, those raw materials need to get to whatever destination they need them on time. And the only way they can get this uh, is by increasing the ship size to get these raw materials, carry them in large volume to uh, wherever they are needed. So therefore, then uh, we, we have seen bigger ship of 300,000 DWT, uh, that's dead weight tonnage, 400,000 DWT and 500,000 DWT ships were built in those days in the area of bulk carriers. So we have seen that but in recent years, the bigness of the size of the ship that we see in the containerized sector due to technology. So we are talking about a uh, container ship of 18,000 TU vessels, 20,000 TU vessels, and 22,000 TU vessels. Uh, so uh, that is how big they are with a draft of 18 meters deep job in the water. So that's how big they are. And with technology also make it possible for the ship to achieve the necessary speed that they want to achieve. So container ship can achieve the speed that they want to achieve. They can achieve up to 28 knots. And in a smaller craft, we have a smaller craft that can even achieve the higher speed, 30, uh, 30 knots or 50 knots. These are possible with the smaller craft. So Technology has indeed uh, revolutionized the shipping industry. And in terms of documentation, it is very much easier these days. Documentation has drastically been reduced due to information technology. And uh, this kind of double uh, duplication of work has, eliminated, has been eliminated due to technology because it is a, if a shipping document has been transferred from part of loading to the part of destination, at uh, the destination port, the, there's no need of duplicating. You only maybe call it copy and paste or uh, using the same document, uh, probably making a few amendments uh, because the description, everything is just going to stay the same. Uh, but before, we're well, looking back 50 years ago uh, with no technology, all these documents have been key manually. And so when the document get to the destination, this kind of duplication have to be key, those same uh, information again manually. So it's kind of a double work in those days. In terms of operation, uh, technology have made it far, far easier. Uh, so ship to shore operation from a creek, when a ship comes into a port, sure, quick turnaround time for the vessel. The vessel are spending less uh, hours in port to, to move. Uh, so they spend a few hours in port, not spending the whole day. Uh, but if you talk decades ago, shipping coming into port, some ships will spend days and some even entering to weeks before uh, they offload and load and uh, selling off. But these days, the maximum ships will spend less than a day uh, in the port and then sell off. And in, in uh, technology also make it for the 
uh, this, this service uh, provider and also, also uh, their uh, client to have a single window of access of service. So typically, if you look at it, the, the shippers who are shipping cargo, uh, they, all, they have single window of access. So they are dealing with one uh, company, the shipping company, and he is representing them, uh, carrying their cargo from wherever it is to the destination. So they don't have to arrange for various carriers to carry the cargo for them. Uh, so one single window of service, that is that is it. And in terms of the inf information uh, service, technology has indeed revolutionized. So uh, in previous slides, we spoke about uh, cargo documents. So in terms of ca cargo manifest access, these access to cargo manifest can be had in the real time. So as soon as the vessel finish loading at the port of loading, the manifest can be transferred electronically to the port of destination in real time at the same time. Uh, but before then, when the cargo, if a vessel finish loading the cargo and cargo manifest is finalized, this cargo manifest will be posted. And this may take days or weeks before it gets to the destination. Or sometimes this cargo manifest, the vessel, the captain himself will carry the, the cargo manifest will be with the captain to read the destination they're passing on over to the agents. Uh, but these days, as soon as the, the, the operations ended, the cargo manifest finalized, this has been wired to uh, the destination and then they can start preparing for the vessel uh, book birth and everything, arrange, process, document, submit cargo manifest to customs and all other authority far far in advance before the vessel even reaching the uh, ter ter territorial waters of, of their country, destination country. Uh, so it makes life easier. And technology also make it easier for the shipping company to have access to account. For example, uh, most shipping company, especially in the liner sector, uh, so we spoke earlier about the difference between the liner and the tram setter. So about the liner setter, this liner shipping company have their headquarters in one location and then have branches all over the world. Uh, to have overview over the account is very much easy. They just log into their system and then they can have overview over all the, their branches to know exactly what they're doing. Previously, this is not possible. Uh, you will rely on your branch offices to finalize their account and then transfer post this to you or send this to you uh, which take days but these days most shipping company have the same platform that they log on to so uh, at the head office you can easily monitor the account especially when you are the head office you have some major clients that you are much more concerned uh, with your branch offices are handling you want to know if they are providing a, a quality service to these clients and know how the account has been managed you can have overview over this account in a real time question your branch offices, how the operation is going. You can have overview over this in the real time. And also in terms of container, you can monitor container condition and everything. And also the captain, the vessel can have overview uh, to know what is the condition of the uh, uh, condition of weather in the port where they're going. And they know about the weather condition and the norms of the port to even avoid in uh, getting into bad weather and other things. These are being made possible due to technology. Uh, so you can have access to, to this information. Uh, the, the captain to just uh, go uh, log in and then by click of button and then they can have overview over all these. And in terms of shipping operations, technology make it easier uh, for high efficiency in the shipping operation as most operation has now be uh, um, uh, optimized and so we are looking at about unmanned vessel worship will be controlled or remotely controlled but in present term uh, most ports have even automated port operations so ship are coming into a port and then everything is being all loaded and offloaded uh, by machines so it makes life easier and very efficient for the the shipping companies and other the port uh, uh, operating uh, port authorities themselves as well. And in terms of planning for the vessel planning, routing, and scheduling, is very easy these days due to technology. Uh, so planning the vessel, especially maybe as uh, planning the storage of the uh, storage of the cargo, uh, all these you can easily. Uh, 
by using a, a software to plan all these these days. So it's easy, just few amendment here and there. Uh, you can easily do uh, multiple vessel planning at the same time. But previously, all these have to be calculated manually. It's, it's a lot of hard work calculations uh, in planning all these, but this is uh, pretty much easy due to technology. And the shipping companies are uh, also be able these days to be fully abreast with all rules and regulation changes have been coming here and there. They're able to be uh, keep their system up to date or their records up to date with all rules and regulation, either coming from uh, IMO or other non intergovernmental bodies. They are able, or national uh, uh, flag authorities, they are able to keep up with all these uh, regulation and requirements due to. Uh, technology because most of these have been uh, certificates or documents have been updated in the system. So when these documents are getting to expire, automatically the system is popping this up so they know this document will expire in this day. So they uh, quickly run, uh, run around it to get these documents up to date. Even if the, the crew, the seafarers are working for them, their certificates need to be up to date. Uh, uh, these certificates can easily be monitored using the system to know this seafarer certificate is going to expire. Therefore, he need to get his certificate renewed and other things. So, uh, its technology make life a, a, a better for shipping companies and also the life on board a vessel that we serve for the sh for the crew working on board a vessel. Uh, life become a little bit easier these days than decades ago where there's no access to internet or border vessels, seafarers have no nothing, but they say they have access to internet so they can watch video, they can play games, they can do all sort of things. And some shipping companies also these days are also implementing, uh, putting other amenities on board a vessel like gyms, having access to gyms. So it's made life better uh, these days for, for the seafarers. And then also seafarers can also do online study and training work on board a vessel. Uh, so just like some of your colleagues are doing, they're doing this course, uh, this program as they are on board a vessel. Uh, previously, this is impossible. You can can do it when you you're on board a vessel you have to get off the vessel when you're on shore before you can be able to do any upgrade or training that you want to do but this uh, is, is easier and possible the other area where technology is also happening in the industry is with regard to uh, transport and logistics so this have to do with the door-to-door -door services so uh, a shipper placing an order at the comfort of his home and receiving it at all a shipping cargo, he's sitting at the comfort of his, of his home, ordering cargo and to be shipped and sent to uh, his customer in the final destination somewhere. And this end-to-end -end service is possible due to technology. And also with regard to just in time concept that we also spoke about in the previous slide that most uh, previous uh, models uh, that most uh, manufacturers are no more uh, having stockpile of warehouses so all the mat raw material they need, uh, they are receiving it and using it in the production at that, at that very hour and then the, the product is going out of the system and then the more, uh, the next quantity they need uh, arriving so they are having it just in time and using it for production. And this just in time concept is only made possible due to information technology because you need to know when the next cargo is going to, your raw, raw material is going to arrive for you to plan for the production cycle. And for the shippers, one stop shopping is good and possible for them, just like we spoke in previous uh, slide. So shippers want to have to deal with one service provider. So one-stop shopping, they, if they're dealing with a freight father, so it's a freight father that is handling everything for them. If they are dealing with a shipping company, that one shipping company dealing with everything for them. They don't want to, they don't want to involve in several contracts and process and procedures. So one-stop shopping for them, Perfect. And then the other area where technology is helping is about having total visibility of assets. Uh, so most manufacturers, as we spoke about just in time concept, most manufacturers, all their raw materials they have is in the transport pipeline, the supply chain pipeline. So they don't have stockpile of uh, uh, cargo in the warehouse. The raw materials they have is in the pipeline. So that is all the asset they have. So they need to have total visibility of it to know 
where the cargo is, when the cargo is going to arrive, what, what condition is, is the cargo, what quantity, all this total visibility give them full assurance on planning as well. And then also in these days with uh, suppression of production from consumption, so which means production is, is taking place millions of miles away where the consumption is also very far. Uh, it's been possible due to technology, how these cargo are being manufactured very quick and then also can be transported to the destination or time. And then also the information about this cargo are also easily available and so technology make it pretty much easier uh, these days for all this. Then the other area is with regard to security. Uh, security is just a subset of safety. And when we talk in terms of maritime, safety refers to defending and protecting the maritime properties and life against maritime risk. And this maritime risk, we can classify into two main areas or uh, two main risks, which is personal risk and the collective risk. Personal risk involve uh, issues such as injuries, death, accident, or carrying on board vessels. And then the collective risks are all other risks that are associated with ships and their uh, cargo and navigational issues. For the shipping companies, they are much more focused and interested uh, or much more concerned with the personal risk, even though collective risk is equally important for them but personal risk is much more important for them because uh, people's life is most important. At the same time, when anything goes wrong with people's life, their company images are stake. So they are much more uh, focused on the personal risk, even though collective risk is also crucial for them, but they focus on uh, personal risk uh, much more. The other area uh, with risk is have to do with technology. So we spoke about technology that it has revolutionized the industry. So which means you have real time data, big data in the real time, but having this data in a real time also pose a risk for the industry, which means this data, if it's entered into the hands of the wrong people, they can use this data to harm the industry. Operation can come to a halt, millions of dollars can, can be lost. So it pose a risk and also with ship operation, that ship can be controlled remotely uh, onshore, which also means that if somebody hack into the system, that person can take control of the vessel, either granted the vessel or collide the vessel with another vessel or object or the, uh, the other things uh, with the vessel. So it is very important. The other area uh, also with uh, the, the, the risk that exposed the technology uh, abroad is about the, the risk in the area of the employees that unknowingly maybe uh, unveiling any information. So for, for example, maybe uh, just by clicking of buttons uh, that the employee is not fully aware of that he's doing any wrong thing and then the, sending some information and not even to somebody uh, exposing other people personal data post a risk. These can bring operation to a halt because those information are not supposed to be sent and then somebody else uh, has them. So uh, those are the area and the level of risks that technology are supposed uh, to the industry. That's why the good side of technology. The area with the sustainability in the maritime industry or in the shipping uh, is much of concern in in our time than never before. Uh, so sustainability, uh, simple, is just in a very process of development to meet the present needs without compromising the ability of the future generations uh, to meet their own needs. Uh, so that boils down to three things: that it basically hinges on three P's. That is the people, the planet, and the profit for us to achieve the sustainability in sh the shipping industry, uh, the, the balance be between these three need to be there. If we, as a people, we don't take care of the society, we are no good steward of whatever is bestowed on us or whatever is given to us, we are no good steward of it, and we just uh, use it anyhow by not thinking about the environment, protecting our environment, and we are so much centered on profit making. Uh, so if our focus is on profit making, we don't 
consider or we don't care if we damage the environment or not, these will, will, will come back to hunt us. And it's also going to destroy our future generation. Their needs, they will not be able to meet uh, those needs. So we need to be good steward of whatever that we have been entrusted in our hands. We need to be a good steward of it and plan for the for the environment well, when we are doing every operation or every uh, whatever we're doing, we need to be environmental conscious and knowing that it's not all about profit. So for companies, it's about social responsibility. You need to be social responsible. Raw materials you are getting, the, 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 for the location where you're getting those raw materials from, uh, make sure that the environment over there are high quality, there, there is preservation over there. You're not destroying the environment to get the raw materials. So this is uh, very key. The balance between the three P is very important. And to achieve the sustainability development, uh, whether being uh, implementing uh, political measures or using technical innovation, all these are good, but it's all bound to something important, which is the culture. Culture is very crucial. Uh, so that has to do with we people are actually. So if people do not buy into whatever anybody is in introducing, if we don't buy into it, it will not work. So if you are maybe politicians or whatever, celebrity or whatever, public figure or international figure introducing something which is no good for the environment, let alone for the society, if we the people, we don't buy into it. We don't accept those things. Those will, not, will never work. So it's all born to everybody that everybody need to take responsibility. When you talk about uh, shipping environment, pollution in the shipping environment, or damage to the marine environment, we all point figures to the seafarers that they are the one causing the harm to the marine environment. But these goes to everyone, including the seafarers, the shipping companies, the legislator, the stakeholder, which is every one of us. We all need to be good steward of whatever uh, that is bestowed in, in our hands. And that we need to be conscious of what we are accepting because this will go a long, this will go a long way to harm and destroy the environment which has been, uh, which is entrusted in our hand. Uh, with regard to sustainability development, I spoke previously that it's all boiled down to the three P's. So the three P's, I just highlighted some of the key areas regarding those three P's that we talk about the people, planet, and the profit. Uh, so on this slide over here, you can just read through the, the, the point. Shipping as a whole, as we say, is very essential for the world economy. So because uh, we say over 95% of the what um, global uh, trade in terms of volume is carried by sea. And more than 75% uh, in terms of value also uh, transported by sea. So it's very important. Shipping is very important. We discussed also this in our model one about the relationship between shipping and the uh, global, uh, the world GDP. So which means shipping is very, very crucial for the world economy. Without shipping, half of the world will starve and other half will freeze. In shipping, uh, if you compare it comparatively, uh, shipping with air pollution, you compare to with other modes of transport, shipping is the cleanest among, one of the cleanest among all the modes of transport. As I put on the slides over here, you can check the figure. So shipping is one of the cleanest, but however, you say that shipping is not perfect. Uh, because things go wrong, ship will collide with a, another vessel or collide with another object, and then there will be spillage of oil in the marine environment or a ship discharging uh, seaweed garbage and a lot of things uh, into the marine environment. All these are not good for the environment. So even though we say ship, shipping is one of the cleanest, but there is much more work to be done uh, to, get, to get more better than what the, the, the industry is doing now. Uh, that is the, the reason why the IMO also implement the 2020 uh, fuel consumption regulations uh, that the shipping industry need to transfer from using uh, the heavy fuel to, the, to, to light fuel. And so shipping has a long way to go and to meet the target have uh, been sent, uh, set by the IMO for the industry. Uh, shipping, the major pollution, polluter areas uh, for or source of 
uh, pollution for shipping uh, in this area. So acidated or spillage, what are they, they are acidates, and then also carried of uh, chemicals or dangerous goods, so uh, all form of dangerous goods, either for class, class one to class nine, any of the classes dangerous goods, uh, these all uh, cause um, damage to marine environment or pollution to the environment, uh, garbage or sewage throwing or discharging of garbage or sewage overboard, these are also uh, harmful for the marine environment. Some people see these, especially the garbage, as some of uh, these are uh, uh, leftover food that they want to throw over to the environment, that it to be uh, good for the uh, fish or the marine mammals, but not everything uh, that is good for the environment. Some of these uh, garbage may be poison for, for the fish or marine mammals in the ocean. So uh, the, the law is you can't discharge all these into the marine environment. Uh, another area is the ballast water. We spoke about the ballast, we spoke about the ballast water uh, previously. The ballast water is one of the major uh, mar maritime pol uh, mar marine pollution area uh, where the industry is having serious conversation. Uh, I am finding better solution for treating the ballast water. And then the other area of pollutant is with the anti fuoli paint. So uh, for sheep to have a smooth uh, body, to have a smooth hull, uh, which will enable them to run smoothly or fast in the, in the sea, they need a very smooth paint. And some of these paints contain some toxic sometimes. So when this uh, paint has been used on the hull of the ship and they are applying on the ocean for a long time, uh, the, the, the seawater wash this paint over time. It's been washed into the, the sea. And those toxic sometimes has been exposed to fishes and fish who, who eat it or other marine mammals who, who, who eat this and then uh, it will poison them. The other concern uh, of environment pollution from uh, shipping industry is with the uh, uh, ship recycling or uh, the, the, the ship uh, breakage of ship or demolition of ships. Uh, so with this demolition, these are mostly done on the beaches. So ship a uh, beach and then uh, demolition is taking place and uh, when ship is being break, these asbestos and all other uh, things or paint and other things wash back into the a marine environment causes a lot of uh, pollution. The other areas is with the noise. So we treat about cold, about noise on board the vessel. Uh, apart from the noise on board the vessel, the vessel is of course a lot of noise to the marine environment as well. Uh, the final point I want to uh, point out over here is with regard to the washing of tanks. So we also uh, spoke previously about the washing of tanks that all, uh, the Actually, the oil spill that we see in the marine environment, 75% is coming from washing of tanks. So washing of tanks, it's simple because uh, if tankers, big tankers, if they, uh, they carry crude oil, or carry oil, they reach the destination, they discharge everything. And eventually, it's not everything that has been discharged. There will be some content of oil that will adhere to the corners of the of the tanks and also on the floor of the tanks. So these are uh, we I said that it will this amount to 0.75% of the total tonnage of the cargo that a vessel is carrying. So when this has been washed and thrown into the marine environment, it causes a lot of pollution. Uh, so that is also the reason why uh, the industry now put regulation in, in place for monitoring uh, the washing of tanks that wherever uh, water that you are discharging after washing of tanks is eventually clean water that you are throwing out. So washing of tanks, you have to uh, discharge these, give this uh, dirty oil water to the shore uh, facility in the port. You give it to the port and the port will treat, uh, take these and dispose them in a nice manner uh, rather than discharging them into the marine environment. Um, thank you. Uh, so this brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, Model 12. As I said, um, because you guys have presented, so I want to make this as brief and short as possible. Uh, that is the reason why I try to uh, speed up, speak a little bit about this. You can always, um, this is a recording, so you can slow it down or repeat it. Uh, if you don't get anything clear, feel free to contact me. Uh, probably maybe I'm speaking very fast and you don't get anything. Uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you.